I loved it from day one to the first time I fell a tree and still loved it even on the last day. To think that you had the power to control it, to go exactly where you wanted it. A certain amount was a power trip, I guess. Big trees, eight, 10, 12. I think the biggest one was 17 feet across. That's a rush because it's so big, you know? <laughs> I couldn't wait to go to work every day. I was first guy up the hill and last guy there at the end of the day. My name is Jim Bassett, and I worked 37 years as a faller without an accident. Every morning, I always give him a hug and a kiss, and I'd always say, stay safe, have a safe day. It's always been a family occupation because my dad worked in the logging industry all his life. Jim's dad was a faller. As I was growing up, I thought, boy, I'd like to be one of those guys, because they were always thought of as uh, king of the woods back in that day. Jim, he brings the best out of you. He basically brought the best out of me when I was working with him. He gets excited about going to work in the morning. He plans his day the night ahead of time. He wanted to get to the saw. He was one of the guys standing by the door ready to go. That was the difference between Jim and, and some of the others, so to speak, because he loved it so much. The people that I trained with, I thought they were very good when I think of them now, but there was a lot that probably never should have been there. Some of them, they had a good story to tell about what they wanted from safety, but not too many ever went beyond that. After a month, I wanted to be on my own. I thought I had, I knew enough. <laughs> and then you think back now, you didn't know nothing. Jim always had a plan. There was safety rules that he followed that he was taught, and then he developed his own along the way and he never changed from that. He never varied from it at all. When we arrive at the job site, we all get a map. We go over the plan. Everybody's got a spot they're gonna to go to work. If any one of us changed our plan during the day, for some reason, because of a little breeze or whatever comes up, I gotta go over here, then you, they want you to stop. Let's go over the plan again because we don't wanna be somewhere you're not supposed to be. I think that was the good part of working with different people. You didn't have to feel inadequate by talking to somebody else. And a lot of times, you both had the same idea that this is the way it should be done. I always felt really confident and comfortable with him and, and what he did in the job. Like he was never a, he never was a show off. He never went out there and tried to fall more trees than the next guy. He always, he was very methodical, right? I've had people, a boss, say, okay, we want you to start here and do this block. But when I'm going in there, it's my choice where I will start and where, where I go next. It's not going to be told to me because I'm the guy that's actually there. So I felt pretty safe. You can, for the most part, visualize everything that's going to happen. Anything that I couldn't see, the outcome of, or there was more than one that things that could happen, if you got somebody else and they said, well, no, I wouldn't touch it either, then we'll blast it, not a big deal, right? Falling in general is dangerous from day one till your last day of your career. You're dealing with elements at times out of your control. When you unleash a tree, the gravity takes over. You can have a falling plan, you can do your best to get away from the tree. If everything is going right, there is times where there's the unexpected. There was a few times when he would come home early and I would know just the second he got out of the truck from the look on his face that there'd been a fatality or, or a bad accident and they'd shut the crew down for the day. You can't dwell on something like that. I mean, you can't get up every day and think your husband's gonna go out there and have an accident, right? You gotta have confidence in his ability and skills. It never worried me to go to work after that. And I've read all these reports and the investigation and you say there's always reasons leading up to it. And you can say, okay, I would never do that. But there are some, in particular a few years ago, one happened and, and I knew some of the guys, I knew him and talking to them, they all said I would never have done anything any different. And, but he just didn't see whatever it was that got him, right? The last few years that I've worked with a few contractors here, very high standards on safety. And even the, today the standard is that you're checked every week, you know. Like you sometimes didn't see your boss for sometimes two weeks back then. 
Jim isn't afraid to say no to something that he doesn't like at work. He'll put on the brakes and say, stop. We're not going to do it this way. This isn't going to fly. And make a new plan and, and uh, go from there. Like, he's just that type of person. If you don't know that you can do this safely, don't be scared to say you need help and get another opinion. You should never feel you have to do something unsafe. Right? And I think they're all told that today by the course before they even start, right? You have the right to refuse unsafe work. And, and we're all told that every, every time we go to work, you know, anytime you feel unsafe, you know, stop. With Jim, I think a big part of his safety was his family, his dedication to being a good husband, a good father. You know, when I met Jim, I was in my early 20s. Those years, you're, you're fairly young and wild and crazy, but he, he made me realize the importance of coming home every day. You know, he planned to do everything right at work so he can carry on that at home. I feel good about the career ahead, and, and you hear lots of people say that. You've got to feel pretty good when you went this far without a bad accident or an injury. It is the best job in logging and forestry, as far as I'm concerned.